I'm Fox 26 meteorologist Ramisha Shea. We've made it to that time of the afternoon. Time for an update on what's happening in the tropics. And there's one interesting thing to note. It was a fairly quiet start to the 2022 hurricane season for the Atlantic Basin. In fact, throughout the entire month of August, no name storms. We've now rolled into November, which is typically the very quiet portion of hurricane season where we're kind of winding things down, wrapping things up. But we now have not one, but two named systems out there. We've got one in the north central Atlantic. That is Martin. That was named today. And then we have Lisa in the Western Caribbean, which is expected to blow up into a hurricane overnight. So things got kind of busy pretty quickly out there, even though we are on the tail end of our hurricane season. We can still get some action. We can still get some things developing. So it is November 1st, but we still have the rest of this month to get through before we can say goodbye to this year's hurricane season. And typically, as you can see with this map, the number of tropical cyclones this month, November, on the low side, but it can happen. And that's exactly what we have happening out there right now. So let me get to the most concerning tropical system out there right now. And this is tropical storm Lisa churning in the Western Caribbean, getting closer to Central America, already starting to see some of those outer rain bands lashing northern portions of Honduras and also eastern parts of Belize, where we currently have a hurricane warning now for basically the entire coast of Belize because this system is supposed to develop into a hurricane overnight and make landfall tomorrow afternoon. So this is a look at it. it has that counterclockwise movement, the area of low pressure starting to become more well defined, and you can almost kind of see an eye feature trying to develop right here. So that's what we'll monitor to see if that becomes any more defined as we go through the next several hours. We are expecting this system to develop into a hurricane as we go through the late night hours. So let's talk about it. We've got a big area of showers and storms out there getting more organized, getting its act together. Here's the latest with Lisa, the latest coordinates, the latest wind speeds as of the 4 p.m. advisory. Maximum sustained winds around 65 miles per hour. We've got movement to the west at 15 miles per hour and pressure falling now down to 1000 millibars. Usually there's a direct correlation with the wind speeds going up and the pressure going down. And that's exactly what we have happening with this system. It is intensifying. We still have very warm water out there helping to fuel this system. And so that means bad news for folks across Honduras and Belize, where we do have hurricane warnings in place for portions of Belize. So we do have the threat for Lisa becoming a hurricane overnight. In fact, we are expecting Lisa to become a 90 mile per hour category one hurricane by tomorrow afternoon around 1 p.m. That's going to be shortly before landfall. I think by mid to late afternoon, it's starting to push into the coast of Belize and Hurricane conditions are likely here. We're talking about maybe some wind gusts over 100 miles per hour, several inches of rain that could lead to some flooding events, maybe some mudslides, and also the potential for that storm surge now that this system is starting to get stronger. We do have a lot of mountainous terrain here across Central America, so it will likely weaken quickly by Thursday 1 p.m. down to 40 miles per hour from a 90 mile per hour hurricane just the day before. Friday afternoon down to 35 miles per hour, likely just a tropical depression and then a remnant low after that. But here's one interesting thing to note. Look where it is headed. This is different from the last couple of days. The models, the forecasts, the last couple of days had the system staying across Central America and eventually just kind of falling apart in Mexico. But now the models kind of want to bring it into the southern Gulf of Mexico. So we will have to watch this one closely to see exactly where it goes to see if we could have potentially some impacts here across Southeast Texas. At this point, no indications that it would head our way, but of course it bears watching. Anything that develops or pushes into the Gulf certainly bears a closer look. So we'll keep you updated on that. But I wanted to show you the sea surface temps and they are still quite warm out there. We've got water in the 80s for much of the Caribbean, much of the Gulf of Mexico, low to middle 80s, a little bit cooler up here just south of the northern Florida coast, but most spots, most of these buoys showing 80. So that is the fuel needed for these tropical systems to gather strength and quickly develop. And that's exactly what we have happening with Lisa. Now I don't want to leave Martin out. We had this system quickly get its act together for today. 
This is a tropical storm. Currently, maximum sustained winds at 60 miles per hour. Movement to the east at 13 miles per hour. And pressure already down to 991 millibars. So that's a fairly low pressure. That's even lower than Lisa. So Martin is actually several hundred miles northeast of Bermuda. So that gives you an indication of just how far north this system is. In fact, this could end up being our northernmost hurricane in November if it does indeed develop into a hurricane because it is actually, believe it or not, going to get close to Iceland in just a couple of days. So that is extremely far north. So this is something that we're watching historically as well because that would certainly be a record maker. But right now it is forecast to become a category one hurricane by tomorrow afternoon. And those wind speeds will be getting stronger. In fact, it's forecast to be right around 80 miles per hour by 1 p.m. Wednesday. And it's still going to be a fairly powerful system, likely losing the tropical characteristics by Thursday afternoon, but still a very powerful system with 80 to 90 mile per hour winds as we go into Thursday and Friday and as it gets closer to Iceland. So it technically will not be a tropical system, but it will be an extra tropical cyclone. So no tropical characteristics, but it will still pack a lot of wind and some heavy rain and it's not often that you talk about a tropical system or at least a former tropical system getting that close to Iceland with wind that strong so very interesting something that we're going to watch it's not expected to make it to Iceland but it could impact some of the shipping channels out there but it should actually stay out over the water so good news for Martin but of course we are watching it closely Let's do a recap for this hurricane season. So far for this year, we've had 13 named storms, five hurricanes, two major hurricanes. Of course, we just bumped that number of named storms up with the addition of Martin. So that makes it 13. So we are getting very close to where we should be or where we normally are for an average season. This is from 1991 to 2020 for the number of named storms. Very close there. A few degrees shy of the average number of hurricanes for our normal season, which would be seven. We've had five and normally we have about three major hurricanes and we've had two so far for this season. So Actually, we're pretty close to average with those numbers, but I'm hoping things will simmer down soon. We've had several systems, a couple of them very devastating, but it is time for a break. So we have Lisa now, we have Martin. They are both expected to become hurricanes, but next on the list would be Nicole, then Owen, Paula, Richard, Sherry, Tobias, Virginia, and then Walter. So hopefully we will not get anywhere close to the end of that list. But of course, if we do, we're here to keep you posted and let you know what's going on. So make sure to have our Fox 26 weather app downloaded. We're starting to get more and more systems locally, bringing the threat for heavy rain, severe weather, stronger cold fronts, and then we've still got a lot of action cooking in the tropics. So you definitely want to be in the know when you're on the go. So if you haven't already done so, make sure to head to the App Store, download our Fox 26 weather app. You can get it on your Android phone. You can get it on your iPhone, whatever you want to do. It is available and you will always be able to keep track of what's happening with our weather. Also, don't forget, you can check me out Twitter, Facebook, Instagram at Ramesha Shade TV on Twitter at Ramesha Shade Weather on Facebook and at Ramesha Shade on Instagram. Have a great day and let's go Strohs.